and welcome to another episode of Footnotes. My name is Matt Simon. As per the usual, I am here to recap the most ravishing language and ideas from the last week of Wired. First up today, we're going to hell, or at least the edges of it. Wired Business reported last week on YouTube starting to ask its commenters to use their real names in an effort to civilize what has long been the most vile, vicious, sexist, racist, anti-Semitic, and anti-intellectual sounding board on the internet. No one is safe on YouTube, unless, of course, it happens to be opposite day. The article refers to the YouTube commenting system as a hellmouth of crude abuse, a hellmouth being an entrance to the underworld that is literally the mouth of some giant beast. This concept was invented by the Anglo-Saxons and remained popular in art throughout the Middle Ages, often used as a prop in theatrical performances. Directors got away with tossing their performers into a toothy pit because back then there were no unions and no OSHA. It should be noted that the Hellmouths didn't actually chew their food, since one ought to be mostly intact in order to burn properly in hell. This begs the question of why artists included teeth at all, and the answer to that is that teeth are fairly easy to draw, and that without them, the monsters would just look like giant toads, and that's not very scary. As the Middle Ages waned, the idea of being eaten and burning for eternity was replaced with just burning for eternity. Perhaps the monsters just weren't hungry anymore. Moving on from fire and brimstone, let's go to the heavens. In a wired science recap of the physical and mental oddities that astronauts experience while in orbit, reporter Adam Mann makes mention of the overview effect. This term was coined by author Frank White to describe the overwhelming sense of awe and serenity that strikes astronauts as they view the Earth. They suddenly understand the fragility of our planet and the absurdity of human conflict and international boundaries, which is a somewhat inconsiderate position toward those who make a living by jailing people who illegally cross national borders. There's actually an organization called the Overview Institute, whose goal is to expose as many people as possible to the overview effect. This, they argue, will help pull us out of our catastrophic dealings with our planet and each other, kind of like Coney 2012 tried to do only this time in a less sketchy and irresponsible manner. This will be expensive, so we should carefully choose who we decide to expose to the overview effect. We could start, for example, by firing people like Coney into a brief but enlightening orbit, then have them land back on Earth in a convincingly constructed hellmouth packed with space heaters. At this point, they'll be really scared and uncomfortably warm, so they'll ask us to fire them back into orbit, or we will leave them indefinitely. With fewer warlords and dictators, we'll no longer need contentious video campaigns like Coney 2012, thus restoring YouTube to civility. Except, of course, on opposite day. 